going to be covering, first of all, some of the basics of reading rhythm. And then we're going to talk about how those apply to lyrics or take some lyrics and apply rhythms to them and just see what we can do with those. I had something that I'd like you to listen to first. So this guy is talking about this particular kind of rhythm. This rhythm is called tracia. You may not have heard that name before, but you've definitely heard this rhythm before. Right. So that's just an example of, um, and it goes on with, you know, dozens and dozens of pop tunes that all use the same rhythm. So uh, we're going to talk about how to interpret those. And then, um, Later on, I'm going to give you a site that you can go to to practice looking at rhythms and seeing how they apply to, to different pop songs. Uh, that's, over there, that's treble clef. And this little item here is a rest. And these are, are bars. What these mark eight is uh, lengths of time. How long they are is arbitrary. They're, the, the important thing is that all of them are equal unless they're otherwise indicated by uh, some kind of in increasing tempo, which I will explain in a bit. And once you have a, a basic length of time, the idea is uh, that you can divide it up in a variety of ways. You can cut it in half, you can cut it in thirds or quarters or five parts or six parts or whatever. Each of those has a way of being represented, right? So the, the basic uh, and thing you're gonna run across in pop music most of the time. And I would guess that most of the songs you're ever going to write um, are going to look a bit like this. They will have four of these things. These are quarter note rests, right? And if you replace the rest with a note, that's a quarter note, right? If you uh, have four of them, then you have filled up your bar. And it sounds like this. And then you have divided this bar into four parts. If you want a note that lasts for as long as two of these, you change that into a half note. And then it sounds like this. If you want a, a note that lasts for the full bar, you'll turn it into a whole note. And then it sounds like this. Let's say uh, you want something that lasts for three of those quarter notes. Then instead of, it's somewhere in between a half note and a whole note, right? So what, we're, what you do is you make a half note and then you put a little dot after it. And you'll see that the, the remaining amount of time is taken up by the missing quarter note, right? And that's going to sound almost like a whole note because you don't hear the silence, of course, because it's silent. Right. Um, however, if we took this same bar and we said, I want to start counting here, a quarter note rest and, um, and make a half note there. Whoops. And so that's going to look like that. We're still counting this one, two, three, Four. And that sounds like this. One, two, three, four. If I wanted two of these, um, I would just make another one here. And that sounds like this. One, two, three, four. I mean, this is all super basic math. And to represent it, what we're going to do is put a time signature at the beginning. And that's going to be called four, four. What that means is that each of these is a quarter note, and there's four of them in a bar. 
uh, that's true even if the only thing in the bar is a whole note rest. By the way, you notice that a whole note rest, I'm going to show you the different rests, by the way. Uh, a whole note rest hangs underneath the line. A half note rest sits on top of the line. The quarter note rest looks like a chair that somebody's in the process of knocking over. And they get smaller. Uh, you can have quarter note rests or 16th note rests, 32nd note rests, and they just get hairier and hairier, right? And so we're going to talk about how to subdivide those. The 